And so the feet are grounding into the earth, the four corners of each foot, and the feet are directly under the hips. So this isn't hip distance apart. This is hip distance apart, okay? Toes point forward. And just think about grounding the four corners of each foot into the earth, and maybe those five toes on each foot, just grounding those into the earth as well. So here, let's just start by lifting the heels and bicycle pedaling the heels. And you're standing tall here. So the idea of crown of head lines up with your tailbone, the coccyx bone. Imagine that head like a helium balloon and you've got a string attached way up to the sky. So you're just standing nice and tall, maybe rolling the shoulders up back and down to open up the chest. So just little bicycle pedals with the heels here for four and three and two and one. Very nice, let's bring those heels back to the earth. You might wanna lift the right heel and just go ahead and circle that ankle. We're warming up the feet here, these extremities. We tend to ignore the feet, the hands, the back body. We're so focused on the front body. So the idea here is that the ankle is initiating the movement and the leg and the thigh and the shin, they just go along for the ride. And when you find an opportunity, you go with the other direction, circling that right ankle, nice and easy for four, three, two, and one. And then bringing it to stillness, you're gonna place that heel down. Let's lift the left heel. If you need to put a hand or a few fingers on that chair, or you could do this sitting in a chair if standing is, is difficult, you decide. And here again, the left ankle initiates the movement. And take your time with it. Just try not to race through it. That standing leg is nice and tall and stable. And then you'll go in the opposite direction, nice and gentle for four, three, two, and one. And then bringing that to stillness, place that heel down. Maybe you wanna place hands on hips for this. Maybe the feet go a little slightly wider and we'll just do some hip circling and get the hips and the pelvis involved and warmed, but gently. Now imagine those hips are on the inside of a barrel and you're trying to hit each spot on the inside of that barrel. If there's any area that feels tight or dark, painful, sticky, you could pause there and breathe into it. Nice and gentle. Few more circles in this direction and then we're gonna go the opposite way. Nice and gentle. If you wanna get the torso involved, that's also a possibility. If you wanna keep it more upright, that's up to you for four, three, two, and one. Very nice, corkscrew back to center, rolling shoulders forward, up, back, and down. The same idea, you're drawing an invisible circle in the air with the shoulder girdles. Oh, so you lift them up and you place them nice and down. It's like you're gently squeezing the shoulder blades together here, but you're not gonna force it or jam it. Just do your optimum stretch, not your maximum. Let's go the other direction, nice and easy, rolling the shoulders. Breathing for four, three, two, and one. Let's bring that to stillness. Now, nice big inhale, soft knees. Inhale, stretch the fingertips up to the sky. Exhale, soft knees as you press the air down by the side of the body. Inhale up, exhale, press. Inhale up, exhale, press. Inhale up. Exhale, press. And let's leave the arms up this time. Now, can you, the palms face the midline here. See if you can drop shoulders away from the ears so you're not scrunching up. Drop the shoulders away. Slide the, the shoulder blades down the back of the body. And you're breathing. Let's stretch the side muscles here, those intercostal muscles. You're climbing an imaginary rope. It's not necessary to look up at the sky but those intercostal muscles that attach to the side ribs, giving them a nice tug. Abdominals engaged. 
legs are soft, uh, they're, they're straight, but they're not locked. So the knees are soft. And those feet are grounding into the earth for four, three, two, and one. Very nice. Let's go ahead and interlace the fingers together. Press the palms directly in front of the chest. So you're pressing the palms away. Inhale, bend the elbows. Exhale, just press it forward, nice and gentle. Inhale and exhale. You could do this seated as well. Inhale and exhale. The arms are moving towards straight. You're not forcing them into a locked position. Two more, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Let's go ahead and take those arms up to the sky. And now little circles, like you're cleaning a spot on the ceiling with those palms facing the ceiling. You're grounding through that lower body area. So you're not, it's just those arms, maybe slightly a bit of movement with the torso. See if you can confine it to the arms. Oh, let's go the other way. Big full breath for four, three, two, and one. Unlace the fingers and just let those arms float down. Imagine they're drifting down through a big vat of honey. So you're not gonna just let them flop if you can avoid it and just shake that out. Let's do a little bit of breathing work. The fingertips come together here and the palms face upward towards the sky. So you've got the palms about navel level. It's inhale, inhale, the palms press down, exhale all the way down. Inhale, inhale, turn the palms, exhale, down. On this next one, inhale, inhale, pause, turn the palms, exhale, all the way down. Inhale, inhale, pause, turn the palms, press all the way down. This time it's inhale, inhale, pause, turn the palms, press it all the way down and pause. Inhale, inhale, pause, turn the palms, exhale, hold it down and pause. Last one. And pause, shake everything out. And now you can do this one sitting in the chair or standing. If you're standing, you could take the wet legs a little bit wider and maybe the hand comes, the right hand comes to right hip. If you're in the chair, you could be sitting in the chair Clasping that side edge of the chair. Again, chairs without arms, please, no wheels. And then you're gonna bring the arm up overhead for the side stretch movement. So you decide what works for your body. I'll do it standing for this round. So let's take the hands to the hips, right hand to right hip, left arm comes straight up to the sky and then just tilting over to the, the right. If you have shoulder issues, maybe fingertips to shoulder might work better as you tilt over to the right. The idea is to keep this chest square to the front of your space and you're breathing. You're grounding through that left foot if you're standing for four, three, two, 
One, let's take that top left arm and just little circles with that top left arm. Again, the idea is to keep the chest square to the front of your space or your screen. Nice and easy, the circles could stay small. If you wanna get crazy, you could make them larger, but that feels all right for four, three, two, and one. Go the other way with the circling, four, three, two, and one, and let's take that arm all the way down, just float it down, nice and slow, no rush to get there, shake it out. I'll do this next time, next side on the chair. So you can grab the side of the chair or left hand to left hip. Right arm comes up overhead. You're grounding through those feet and you're tilting over to the left. If you have shoulder issues, fingertips to, to the shoulders and you can Move that way, or you can circle the elbow. You decide for four, three, two, one. Little circles with that top arm, breathing. These circles could stay small. We're pumping synovial fluid now into the shoulder girdle. That doesn't happen until you move the joint. So let's go the other way as you find the opportunity for four, three, two, and one. Let's bring that to stillness and come back to center and float that arm down nice and slow. If you can manage that, nice and slow, shake it out. Very nice. Let's go ahead and do, I'm gonna do this standing. It's probably, if you need support, go to a wall, go to your chair. So the feet are maybe about hip distance apart. The knees are gonna track over the toes. The torso will stay upright as best you can. So inhale, baby squats. Exhale, come to standing. Inhale, baby squats. Exhale, come to standing. For eight, whoo, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, stay down on one. The feet are flat here. Little baby squats, knees track over toes for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Stay down on one. Just pause here, strengthening the thighs, the quads here. Shaking is good, so don't worry if you're quivering. <laughs> it's a good sign that the nervous system is adjusting to what you're asking the body to do. So staying in this baby squat, I'll do this in profile. You might wanna take the arms up. Here we're in chair pose. In yoga, ukkatasana, awkward pose. Your bum is pointing toward an invisible kindergartner's chair. It's behind you. And your abdominals are engaged and you're dropping shoulders away from the ears for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Staying here, exhale one arm behind, inhale back, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale for eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Arms come back up, legs straight and nice and slow. And again, let those arms float down, triple slow time. No rush to get there. Nice and easy. Let's go ahead and adjourn to the chair. So I always like to recommend you sit on the front third of the chair, of the seat of the chair. So you're not collapsing into the back of the chair. Now for this one, you might wanna use blocks. If you don't have blocks, you could use water bottles or canned goods or nothing. You don't have to have them. Let's take the feet nice and wide. The legs go wide here. We can extend the arms out to the side and then inhale. We're gonna halfway down with a flat back, 
and the crown of head still lines up with the tailbone. So again, grounding through those feet, breathing for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Arms come down. And now you can keep the back flat. Now you're letting, not letting the head dangle here. See if you can walk your hands. Maybe they reach the earth, maybe they don't. And just walk, if you're using blocks, walk them forward. If you don't have blocks, you can't reach the floor, hands to thighs. You decide what works for you. I have short arms, so I love the blocks. And once you find your most optimum position here, maybe little rocks from side to side. Breathing, opening up the hips, the hip flexors, the psoas. The psoas is buried nice and deep in there. Couple breaths here as you rock in the middle. And then if you're using your hands or your blocks on the earth, you can walk over to the right. And maybe that left hand goes a little bit farther than the right hand. You decide. And again, maybe micro movements here might feel interesting delicious or not. Maybe it's a static press. Big full breaths, breathing into the back body now. And then walking through center, going over to the other side. Maybe the right hand goes slightly farther forward than the left. And again, rocking from side to side might feel good or not. And this side might feel different than the other side. You choose for four, three, two, and one. Let's come back to center now. Either hands to the earth or the blocks walk back. And then everybody's forearm is gonna come to the thighs. Maybe the hands come to the thighs. Let's take the hands to the thighs instead. So from here, right shoulder presses towards left knee. Very slowly coming back to center. Left shoulder presses to right knee, coming back to center, very slow. Side to side, exhale, inhale in the middle, exhale and inhale for four. Three. Two. And one. Let's go back over to the left side. And this time we're staying over here. Now you can take the left forearm and place it on the left thigh. Avoid the knee joint, please. And then the right hand is going to gently press open the right thigh. You're looking over the left shoulder to the wall behind you. Now that right thigh, that hand is not a death press. It's just a gentle, steady pressure to open up that hip and your breathing. For four, three, two, and one. Coming back through center, lifting up in center. Left shoulder goes over to right knee. Right forearm can be on right thigh. Avoid the knee joint. And you're pressing with that left hand, that left thigh open. So the hand presses into the thigh. The thigh presses into the hand. You're looking over the right shoulder to the wall behind you. For four, three, two, and one. Coming back to center, nice and easy. Coming back upright, and let's just walk the legs back together and maybe shake the legs out. Maybe grab a drink of water if that's appropriate. I'm gonna blow my nose very quickly. Mm -hmm. And now from here, let's go ahead and turn in the chair to the right. So you're gonna take that back right hand and you're gonna follow the horizon all the way around. You're twisting, the knees stay forward and you come to a sticking point and you're just gonna stay in this twist. I'm grabbing the back of the chair. I'm looking over the right shoulder. I'm staying calm and relaxed. Couple of deep full breaths here. Now for this twist, we're gonna slightly release it, just slightly come out of it, and then exhale, squeeze back into it. 
slightly come out of it and then squeeze back into it. Let's do four, three, two, and one. Very nice. Let's come back to center nice and slow and just walk your way around in the chair to the other side to the left. That back left hand follows the horizon and you're twisting and you're twisting. The legs stay pointing forward and then you're gonna come to your sticking point and I'm grabbing the back of the chair for support into this twist. Big full breaths here, giving a nice twist to the spine, squeezing fresh blood and oxygen into the entire spine. And now we're gonna slightly release and then squeeze again. Slightly release and squeeze it again. Let's do four, three, two, and one. Very nice, then coming back to center, back to the front. Again, sitting in that front third of the seat so that you're not collapsing into the back. This time the legs are just parallel, right directly under the hips. Let's go ahead and interlace the fingers one more time. And we're going to wrap them around the back part of the skull. So remember to sit up tall. Remember that head is like a helium balloon floating up towards the sky. The tailbone, the coccyx bone is rooting into the chairs. Inhale, big full breath. And then exhale, just squeeze over, touch the knees if that's available and then opening it back up. Do not yank the back of the neck. That's not a death press on the back of the neck. Inhale, open. Exhale, close and squeeze. Inhale, open. Exhale, close and squeeze. One more time. Inhale, open. Exhale, close and squeeze. Coming back up. Hands and arms remain the same. This time we're going to widen the legs again, widen the legs. This time right elbow crosses over to left knee. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, very nice, coming back to center now. It's gonna be lifting the legs this time. So exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, or stay with the previous one we just did for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Lovely. And then just unwinding those arms, loading them down, shake everything out, do your chicken flapping, whatever feels good, releasing any tension that might have remained or crept in there. Let's try these here. You're going to make little bird hands with your fingers. So the four fingers come together with the thumb. You've got little bird beaks here going. All right. So you're sitting tall in your chair and you're gonna stretch the arms out to the side with the beaks pointing up to the sky. You're gonna start rotating the hand and the wrist only. So those arms aren't really moving, it's just the hands and the wrists. And you're extending those arms to the side wall and you're opening the chest. Feet are grounding into the earth for four, three, two, one, let's go the other way. Four, three, two, four more if you can. Four, three, two, one. Let's bring that to stillness. Now open the fingers wide. You're gonna spread your fingers wide and they're facing forward. They're facing the screen. See if you can open the chest an 18th of an inch, maybe more, but maybe not. Don't force it, don't jam it. Thumbs point up to the sky, breathing. One more deep full breath right here. 
Now the palms face the sky. The thumbs point to the back walls. Focus on that breath. One more breath. Now rotate those hands and wrists so that the, the thumbs point towards the floor. It's okay to say ow if you need to say ow. <laughs> We're all muted. For four, three, two, one. Now the hands come into soft fist. Arms stay the same, parallel to the earth. Exhale, soft fist in. Exhale, soft fist out. Inhale, exhale for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. You're done. Float it down nice and slow. Try not to let it collapse. I know it's tempting and just shake it out. So let's just shake out those arms and just rotate the arms from the shoulder. So you're not moving anything but the shoulder girdle. The arms kind of are like wet noodles that you're just flopping by the side, just getting some blood flow back into there. Let's bring that to stillness. That's, you might wanna have blocks. If you have blocks, bottles or canned goods, fine. If you don't, don't worry. So have, if you have those props, place them right in front of you. And let's cross the right ankle over the top of the left thigh right ankle over top of left thigh. You're gonna take the right hand and you're just gonna gently press on that soft part of the thigh. Avoid the knee joint, do not push on the knee, please. They get very cranky and they don't like it when you uh, put a big strain on them. You're sitting tall and now we're just opening the hips to bring some blood flow into that pelvic area. We get really tight in the hips from too much sitting, driving and watching TV and sitting in front of computers, etc. So this is just a little pump here with the hand and let's bring that to stillness. You're gonna take that right forearm, slip it underneath the right calf and with the other hand, you can lift that leg and just maybe rock that leg side to side, breathing nice and gentle. Maybe it's circles. So if you're circling into that hip socket, be sure you circle in both directions. That top right foot is flexed. <sighs> Breathing. <sighs> and let's just bring that to stillness. Let's replace that ankle on top of the left thigh. And that top foot is flexed. That top left foot, right foot, sorry, is externally rotated. So you're externally rotating that top right foot. Float the arms up overhead. Shoulders drop away from ears. Inhale. Exhale. Leading with the sternum. Back stays flat. Head is not going to dangle. Maybe if you have nice long arms, they come to the floor. If they don't, maybe they could come to blocks, bottles, or cans. Maybe it's a fist on that prop. Maybe it's not. And if that's not available, grab opposite elbows. And you just hang out with this thigh on the top here. Try not to let the head dangle. You should be feeling it in that outer right hip. You're staying calm and relaxed for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Coming back to center. Hands can come back to the thighs, avoid the knee joint, back is flat as you come back on up. Let's unwind the leg. You can grab the back of the thigh and just circle that leg. Get a little relief in there. Ooh, this should feel good. <clears throat> Let's go the other way. And then one more thing here, I'll turn to the side to show. Take your right forearm behind the back of the right thigh or you could use a strap around the ball of the foot, you decide. And the idea here is to stay nice and tall as you sit. Inhale, bend, exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend, exhale, straighten for eight, seven, six, five, four, 
three, two, and one. Very nice. Now you can place that leg down. Oh boy, let's dance the legs. A little Fred Astaire here. And just notice now, let's bring the legs to stillness. Notice the right side of the body and the left side of the body. Let's cross left ankle over top of right thigh. The top left foot is flexed. The top left foot is externally rotated. You're gonna float those arms up overhead. Inhale, shoulders drop away from ears, back stays flat. Exhale, leading with the sternum, leading with the crown of the head. You're gonna float those arms down maybe to the earth, maybe to props, or maybe opposite elbows. You decide what works the best for you. Maybe micro movements here might feel interesting or not. And you might notice that this side feels different than the other side. Usually the two sides do not feel the same. I like the little rocking motions. It brings some extra stretching to that low back area. Breathing for four and three and two and one. Very nice, let's come back to center. Hands can come back to the thighs, avoid the knee joint as you lift up, back stays flat. No rounding, please. <clears throat> let's take that knee and just, I don't think we, did we do the rocking? I don't think we did the rocking, maybe we did. But if we didn't, we'll do it again. <laughs> and we're gonna circle the knee, maybe, or just east to west, you decide. There we go, we got that part in. Didn't neglect it. And then let's come back now to stillness. Now, you're gonna grab the back of the thigh and just circle to get some opening blood flow in there. Uh, both directions. And then just bringing that down to stillness, nice and easy. Let's shake out the legs. Let's come to standing, if that's available, very quickly. <clears throat> I'm gonna face the back of the chair. That's my support. You could also face a wall or a piece of furniture. And the feet are gonna come into first position. So heels together, toes wide apart, 30 to 45 degrees. And let's go ahead and lift up onto those tippy toes. So lifting up onto the toes, inhale, and then exhale, heels come back to earth. Inhale, lift. Exhale, drop for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Stay up on those toes on one. See if you can align crown of head with tailbone. Maybe one arm might want to come up to balance. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe a second arm might come up to balance, maybe not. For eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. One arm comes down, second arm comes down, float the heels down, shake those babies out, shake those feet out. Now the toes point straight ahead, and I won't mirror you for this. Left foot is forward, right foot comes back, and the feet are like on railroad tracks, so you're not on a tight rope, you're getting a nice wide stance, and the torso stays more or less upright. Inhale, lift back heel, exhale, plant it into the earth. Lifting, inhale, exhale, press it away for eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Keep it lifted. And now you're going to bend slightly that front right le left leg. And maybe the torso can now tilt forward 20 degrees. Maybe one arm can come forward. Maybe a second arm could come forward. Maybe not. You decide what's appropriate for eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, 
and one. One arm comes down, second arm comes down, and then that right foot meets the left, shake out the feet. Let's do the other side. This time the right foot forward, left foot is back. This one, the torso stays upright. You're gonna lift that back heel, inhale, lift. Exhale, press for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Stay up on one, nice and easy. Now you're gonna tilt that torso maybe 20 degrees. Maybe one arm can come up. Maybe a second arm could come up, but maybe not. You decide. This side may feel different for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. One arm comes down, second arm comes down, and the torso returns upright. The foot meets the right, shake out the legs. And now one more thing you might want to add. We're going to do some feet massage. A very big favorite. <laughs> Let's cross one foot over the, the top of the thigh. Avoid the knee joint. And you're going to take your foot and you're going to grab the five toes and you're just going to flap those toes like you're fanning yourself on a hot day in Madrid. So you're just, <laughs> you're just flapping those toes and getting some blood flow going into the little piggies. Mm -hmm. We tend to ignore our feet, and since they carry us around all the time for X number of years, you need to pay attention and send some love to the feet. And once you've done your fanning and flapping, you're going to take each individual toe and massage it from the base of the toe all the way to the end of the nail. And you're going to do it for each individual toe. Oh, you would be amazed and how much it's going to feel, make that foot feel much better, much different. So do each individual toe, don't neglect them. Base of toe all the way to the end of the nail, including, of course, the big toe. <clears throat> and then you're going to take your fingers and you're going to rummage around the underside part of the toes. We never seem to think about that area, but go in there and rummage around in there. That's a technical term, rummaging. <laughs> and then when that's done, you're gonna take your two thumbs and you're gonna massage the big toe ball mound and the little toe ball mound, working your way into the center. And then you're gonna work yourself all the way down the inner and outer edge of the foot. And you're gonna massage the arch and you're gonna to get to the heel. Nice steady pressure with the, with the thumbs and the hands, the fingers. And then I like to take two hands and then rub the ankle nice and gentle. And then I like to take the fingers and just travel down the trough of the bones on the top of the foot. You get into those, that top area of the foot And then you're going to take your fist and you're going to do right in the middle of your arch. And you just give it a little pounding, a gentle pounding. And bring that to stillness. Then you're going to take two hands, maybe a gentle pat with the two hands. And then if you want a little more, a little slapping with that, those hands. So you really get some activity, some chi going into those feet. And then you're going to bring that to stillness and cross that foot and just notice how that foot feels compared to the other foot. I notice a huge difference. So now we're onto the other foot. You're going to place the ankle on the thigh. You're going to flap those five toes like you're fanning yourself in a hot day. Oh, oh this foot really feels different. Oof. And once you feel like you've done a good job with the flapping, you're gonna take each individual toe from the base of the toe to the end of the nail and just give some love to those toes. We really, you can't walk without our toes. You really can't ambulate without your toes because that gives you that 
gliding motion with the foot that moves you forward into space. So each individual toe gets a loving massage. And then you're gonna go underneath the toes and rummage around under the underneath of the toes area. Uh, moaning and groaning is fine, we're all muted. <laughs> and then you're gonna take your two thumbs and you're gonna massage the big toe ball mound, the little toe ball mound and work your way in towards the center. And then you're gonna go down the sides, inner and outer sides of the foot. Don't forget the arch. And then you're gonna work your way towards the heel. So give a nice steady pressure to the heel. And then I take two hands and just rotate around the ankle. Mustn't forget the ankle. And then the top of the foot, you can just follow the trough of the bones on the top of the foot. Oh boy. And then when you feel like you've done a sufficient job, you take a fist, soft fist, and pound the arch gently, nice and easy. And then taking the two hands, you're gonna give a nice pat to that foot and the ankle. And if you want a little more intensity, you can slap that foot. Woo, yay. and then bringing that to stillness and winding the foot and the leg and just noticing how those feet feel. Now, this is an opportunity you can sit back in your chair, but you're gonna sit nice and tall in your chair. Hmm. So the sits bones grounding into the, the chair, the feet grounding into the earth. Maybe roll those shoulders up, back and down, just so you open the chest. The chin could be just slightly tucked crown of head shooting up into the sky and just noticing the effect of the practice and breathing into any residual tension that might remain. Noticing relaxation, of course, in those happy feet and that relaxation moves up into the ankles, the low legs, the knees, and then the thighs as though warm water is completely enveloping those limbs. Relaxation dropping into the pelvis, the buttocks, the low back releases. The relaxation moves up from the pelvis now, the belly up into the torso, enveloping the ribs, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, the spleen, the pancreas, all the vital organs deeply relaxed. It moves up into the shoulders and rolls down both arms all the way to the fingertips, all the way to the fingertips. It envelops the throat and the neck, and then it envelops the head all the way to the crown of the head. The back of the neck releases, the face and the jaw let go. The tongue lies at the bottom of the mouth, teeth slightly apart. Eyes sink deep into the skull as though a white circle of healing light envelops the entire body. Noticing back body and front body, right side, and left side, noticing the earth below supporting you and the stars and the moon and the cosmos above. Noticing the whole body together, the whole body together, the whole body together. And as you rest here in a seated Shavasana, Here's a poem from Mary Oliver entitled, I Worried. I worried a lot. Will the garden grow? Will the rivers flow in the right direction? Will the earth turn as it was taught 
And if not, how shall I correct it? Was I right? Was I wrong? Will I be forgiven? Can I do better? Will I ever be able to sing? Even the sparrows can do it. And I am, well, hopeless. Is my eyesight fading or am I just imagining it? Am I going to get rheumatism, locked jaw, dementia? Finally, I saw that worrying had come to nothing and gave it up and took my old body and went out into the morning and sang. Taking a nice deep breath, inhaling, letting it out with a big sigh of relief. And then bringing the arms up overhead, hands meet in prayer, dropping down the midline, stopping at the heart, Samastiti. May you be happy. May you be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May you know peace. I salute the bright light in each and every one of you. Namaste. Jai Bhagwan.